In this video, we'll cover the use of boundaries in power surfacing. We'll see how they are created, but more important, we'll see when and why to use them. So what are boundaries? They are an ID system, essentially material IDs. But in SOLIDWORKS, they play a crucial role in the conversion process by preserving targeted sub-D edges and defining persistent face groups. Let's start by looking at a couple of the power surfacing conversion options. With the normal conversion, the resulting CAD solution is optimized. You can see that it has been able to remove a good portion of the sub-D's edges. Now let's go back into edit mode and try the one-to-one -one NURBS conversion. This one, as you can see, retains all of the sub-D's edges. That's okay if your mesh is fairly simple, but ideally you will want to specify which edges must be kept. And to do that, we will be using the boundary tool. Defining a boundary is simple. You select the faces you want. I'll select these near the tail end. And from the power surfacing menu, select Specialized Tools, Boundary, and Define Boundary. Boundary edges are mint green colored, but the edge weight purple color takes precedence. So now I might decide I want the tail end of my nice organic model to be a separate material. We'll switch back to normal and convert. And you can see that those edges are retained on conversion. And I can add a different material to those surfaces. It's pretty straightforward. Now let's take a look at another use case. Let's try an offset surface and trim. I've prepared a little sketch, so let's select the front surface and create an offset. Insert, Surface, Offset, and now I'll trim it. Insert, Surface, Trim. And then add a thicken. Insert, boss, base, and thicken. Now we've got a nice little octagon protruding with the same surface topology. So let's edit the power body again and make a change in the sub D. I'll make an offset loop back near the tail. And when it converts, we find that the face reassignment has left the trim broken. So what we really should have done is define a couple of these faces for the widget's parent surface. Let's go ahead and do that. Back in edit mode, I select the faces I want to retain. And once again, Power Surfacing Menu, Specialized Tools, Boundary, Define Boundary. The second boundary gets a separate ID and will overwrite any pre-existing ID numbers on the selected faces. And let's convert. Rebuilding the features will probably be quicker than trying to reassign everything. Now I can make more drastic changes without losing the earlier features, so let's go ahead and edit the sub-D again. I'll go ahead and add an extrude and a fully weighted edge. And make a few more changes in the front.
And for those of you that think it's just counting faces from the right, we can do an insert loop back near the tail. And on Convert, you can see that the boundaries have protected the widget. Note also that a few of the earlier edges are gone as the new configuration is optimized. In the first video, the boundaries we set were more or less generic areas for surfaces. In this video, we'll be setting up the sub-D for some relationships with the sketch. The current front area is relatively safe with all of its fully weighted edges, so I'm going to remove the recent changes and make it more challenging. And then convert. Let's begin by creating a new sketch on one of the flat surfaces of the sub-D. I'll make a simple circle and extrude it and give it some draft. We can head back to edit the sub D and rotate the surface to see what happens. On conversion, the creation plane reflects the change in orientation, but the cylinder is no longer in place. So here's the next use case for boundaries to make sure that the edges or points for referencing will be persistent. Back in edit mode, I want to select a face on either side to ensure that each of the four edges will be isolated and define a boundary. Power surfacing, specialized tools, boundary, define boundary. I'll convert. and edit the sketch by adding a few construction lines that will have relationships with the points. I'll make them equal length. And then merge the circle's center with their meeting point. Now when we head back and adjust the face and convert, the cylinder stays on the surface as directed. You can obviously get fancier with the relationships, but that should give you some ideas. The third reason to use boundaries is to isolate high detail areas so unnecessary edges will be removed during conversion. For this example, we can use a simple planar sub-D surface. Let's make it 10 by 10. If we convert now, you can see that it comes in as a single surface. Let's add some detail to the sub-D. A few extrudes ought to do the job. On convert, you can see how the edges necessary for the extra geometry run all the way out. Back in edit mode, we can select the extrudes plus a buffer zone and set the boundary. Power surfacing, specialized tools, boundary, define boundary. Now on convert, you can see how the CAD version is a lot cleaner. And in case you want the corners to remain sharp, you can always head back into edit mode and give the corner vertices a weight of 100% with hard edge. Be sure and check out the InPower Software website for more videos on power surfacing. In the first video, the boundaries we set were more or less generic areas for surfaces. In this video, we'll be setting up the sub-D for some relationships with the sketch. The current front area is relatively safe with all of its fully weighted edges, so I'm going to remove the recent changes and make it more challenging. And then convert.
Let's begin by creating a new sketch on one of the flat surfaces of the sub D. I'll make a simple circle and extrude it and give it some draft. We can head back to edit the sub D and rotate the surface to see what happens. On conversion, the creation plane reflects the change in orientation, but the cylinder is no longer in place. So here's the next use case for boundaries, to make sure that the edges or points for referencing will be persistent. Back in edit mode, I want to select a face on either side to ensure that each of the four edges will be isolated and define a boundary. Power surfacing, specialized tools, boundary, define boundary. I'll convert. And edit the sketch by adding a few construction lines that will have relationships with the points. I'll make them equal length. And then merge the circle's center with their meeting point. Now when we head back and adjust the face and convert, the cylinder stays on the surface as directed. You can obviously get fancier with the relationships, but that should give you some ideas. The third reason to use boundaries is to isolate high detail areas so unnecessary edges will be removed during conversion. For this example, we can use a simple planar sub-D surface. Let's make it 10 by 10. If we convert now, you can see that it comes in as a single surface. Let's add some detail to the sub-D. A few extrudes ought to do the job. On convert, you can see how the edges necessary for the extra geometry run all the way out. Back in edit mode, we can select the extrudes plus a buffer zone and set the boundary. Power surfacing, specialized tools, boundary, define boundary. Now on convert, you can see how the CAD version is a lot cleaner. And in case you want the corners to remain sharp, you can always head back into edit mode and give the corner vertices a weight of 100% with hard edge. Be sure and check out the InPower software website for more videos on power surfacing.